I'll see you back for another tutorial. I hope that your deforming landscape has been treating you very well. This one is just gonna add to the previous one. Um, it's gonna add a few little extra features and there's gonna be one little optimization from the previous one. If you haven't checked out that tutorial, this isn't gonna make any sense, but what we are gonna do in this one is you can see um, I've got some debugging colors so that, you know, the uh, you can really see what's going on because I have a bit of a stylized look. Um, so you can see that, you know, the ground is being deformed and it's permanently deformed. Um, but then if I quickly run over here, let me speed up my character and I just face plant. Um, you can see that this grass actually pops back up after a little while which is absolutely fantastic. And this can be applied to your snow when it's snowing, um, can, you know, fill in the, uh, the troughs that you dig. Same thing with sand. Um, you know, if it's a sandstorm, then obviously your tracks are gonna get covered up. Honestly, it is an extremely simple addition and it doesn't add any performance cost whatsoever. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're going to find your render targets. Mine are located in art, then materials, then landscape, then landscape deformation. There we go, here they are. So we're gonna click on one of them. Then we are going to make sure that the render target format is set to RTF RGBA8. And basically that's sort of the, the cheapest way of getting a four channel vector. And you're also gonna go to your other one, the persistent, and do the exact same thing. Right, that's out of the way. Then all we have to do is go to your deformation uh, material, not the draw to persistent, but the, the post-process deformation material. And once you're looking inside this, you're gonna go here and basically before you would have just been using your red channel, um, which would have been going into here. So what you're gonna do instead is do a make float three, which is going to make an you know, XYZ RGB uh, texture output. And you are going to, in the red channel, red is for permanent deformation, green is for grass, and B is for, it's just a leftover channel. And you could also use the alpha as a channel. Um, for this sake, we're gonna ignore that. In the grass, we're going to multiply by 0 0.993. Now what that's gonna do is basically create like an exponential curve. So here's, here's, uh, <laughs> here's one down to zero. And it's basically gonna do a curve like this. That's gonna approach zero, but never actually reach it. So what this is actually doing when we're subtracting or multiplying it by, you know, a, a fraction of one is that every frame or however often your scene capture updates and writes to the render targets, it's making the values darker depending on, you know, which channel you are affecting and then recombining them all to be used in your landscape and your foliage and whatnot. So every frame it gets darker, which leaves you with uh, some drop off. As this trail goes onwards, you can see that the green channel is fading to zero further back in time that the trail was painted. So this is gonna be what we use for our grass. And this one here, if you set up this same thing, um, this is gonna be for like our snow or our sand. And going into this subtract node is going to be a material parameter collection that you, you know, whatever your weather system is, whatever determines how much, you know, rain or snow or whatever you have. Uh, for me, this is the actual spawn rate, like how many raindrops do I want to spawn per second? So I'm actually dividing it by 1 million. Um, you might be a lot smarter than I am and use smaller numbers, but it's just a matter of tweaking it. So we're going to save that. So then in your landscape, um, in the deform section, um, you're gonna make sure that you're masking the red channel um, for whatever you, you know, whatever you are affecting by deformation. Um, you could also like split it up so that, you know, maybe you're using blue to do something else and you could, you know, use that to have different displacement reformation effects on different layers and stuff. Um, but for this example, we're just going to use R, which is the one that can recover over time based on the rain amount. 
And the next and also last thing we're gonna do is go to your master material foliage that we were doing the, the downwards and sideways deformation in. And where you're coming out of your spiral blur, you're literally just gonna change the mask R to the mask G. Um, and hit save. <laughs> And honestly, that's it. We're done. It's it's all ready to go. So for example, if I grab my material parameter collection that has my rain amount in it, if I just increase it, you'll see that this sand starts to, starts to reform. So imagine that this is snow and this is snow falling instead of rain. Um, but you can see you know, it's it's deforming. Um, you could make it much slower. You could make it as fast as you want. Yeah, the thing is that this is now changeable on the fly. And then when I take it back down to zero, it stops deforming completely, which is pretty amazing, I think. And also if we go for a run, just like I showed at the start of the video, that the grass recovers. It, it pops back up after you've, you know, been rolling around in it and doing your thing, ragdolling, attacking, whatnot. Hey, it's Charlie from the future. Uh, I just realized I forgot to mention one extra little thing. So in your grass material, coming off of the render target, uh, which we have now masked to G, um, after this saturate, you're going to bring it all the way down to where your wind is. What you're gonna do is you're going to uh, one minus it, which will invert the zero to one, the one to zero. And I've just added 0 0.1 just so, you know, when it's flattened, it will still be a tiny bit wavy. Um, and then you might not have this separate wind influence thing. I can't remember if I put that in the original tutorial, but basically just copy what I've got here. And so what that's going to do is any grass that is flattened or the more flattened the grass is, the less affected by the wind it will be. Um, and that'll help prevent clipping and sort of, yeah, ugly, ugly clipping of the grass and whatnot. Um, and also make it feel a little bit more interactive. Sweet. So that's it for the deformation. And then the one quick optimization that we're going to make is in the grass material once again. So you're going to go back to your grass master material. We're going to open that up. And if you just locate the section that we were doing that um, directional information from, you can see that I've cut out one of the texture samples, the one that was in the middle, because I realized that if we're getting the positive and negative, you know, X value and the positive and negative Y value, um, or R and G value, then when we actually add them together, they annihilate one another in the middle where this middle texture was anyway. So that middle one was completely unnecessary. So I'm gonna keep this right here for you for five seconds and you can take a screenshot of it. Three, two, one, right, that's it. Um, and you're done. This was like a, this was a speed run of a tutorial. Uh, I feel like that was pretty quick. I guess I'll find out. Anyway, I hope you found this useful and entertaining. Um, as always, if you've had any troubles with any of these tutorials or any Unreal Engine problems in general, feel free to join our Discord. It's full of very lovely, helpful people and we look forward to having you. So if you're a complete noob at Unreal Engine and you like what we do here, you want some people to talk to about your game, join the Discord, it's fantastic. We also hit 1000 subscribers the other day, which is actually a bit mind boggling. It sort of came out of nowhere. I didn't really expect that to happen so quickly. Obviously some people are enjoying and finding this educational. If you are one of those people, just make sure that you're subscribed and you know, click the bell icon. You can unsubscribe at any time. It's not a lock-in contract. And with that, I say goodbye. Goodbye.